uh, Rosemary, I want to thank her for being here because it means a whole lot for you to be here in the Philippines. I'm so happy being here. I love it. <laughs> like I'm having the best time ever. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I know how booked you are. Mm -hmm. Your schedule. I've, I've actually watched all of your interviews on YouTube and how you told another interviewer that basically your schedule is fully packed. Yeah. So we only, we only want to keep you for about 15 to 50 minutes. Okay, great. In 2009, you were around 50 years old? Um, I don't, hey, I failed math. Uh, <laughs> I'm 64 now, so I guess that's like, I started, well, I started way before 10 years wow. because I was working on it for years yeah. before that. Oh, really? Yeah, so I was definitely in my 50s for sure. I wanted to ask about that because my brother and I, we grew up um, under parents who just really wanted us to put out the business. Okay. At the age of 50, were you still afraid to put out the business with all of the experience that you have? Oh yeah, you're always scared to do something new and different, mostly when it comes to spending your own money. Mm -hmm. Because I self, I, I'm still self-financed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to take investors at this point because I just don't trust them. So how is that for you? Well, I'm also a hard worker and when I work I save my money. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm just going to say the younger generation yeah, could learn something from this because a lot of them don't save their money. Yes. And I did, you know, and I made sure that what I was starting, that I could do it without having to beg for money from people. Yeah. Because once you start doing that, you know, you're indebted to them, yes. and they take they take over. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm pretty strong. I'm very, you know, strong-willed. I'm a control freak, so I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to have anybody tell me what to do, and nobody's going to change my products mm -hmm. to cheaper ingredients. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, I definitely could be labeled difficult, but I don't care. I have a mission, I'm on it, and nobody's going to distract me from it. I read in the articles that you're really into uh, being involved with the products. Yes. Um, I want to know what was the hardest product that you had to bring out to the market? Like what challenged you the most out of all of your mind? The ones I haven't done yet. <laughs> there's a reason I haven't done them yet. So everything that we brought out in the market has not been that hard because mm -hmm. I, I kind of knew what I wanted mm -hmm. and um, it came together very easy. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know the, the the hardest problem that we have right now is just finding really good labs that understand the whole concept of making green makeup rather mm -hmm. than using chemicals. Yeah. So we you know it's a, it's a hard work to find you know labs that are evolved past mm -hmm. the normal traditional mindset and tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. I always liked the idea that you advocated this idea that um, you want people to show their real skin yeah. and that they should be proud about it. Yeah. My question is, because I struggle with authenticity, what's the idea behind accepting the skin that you have? Like, Why do you advocate this? Where did it come from? Well, I just believe that skin is very sensual. And when I watch Instagram, mostly in America, mm -hmm. I don't know about here because I, I haven't looked at very many things here, mm -hmm. but in America, it's just piling the makeup on and it's, you know, it's creating a whole new persona. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of these kids are getting lost in this little fantasy world. Yes. Because in reality, you know, are they going to come out of the house with that makeup on? And, you know, I'm sure some of them will. Mm -hmm. But for me, I don't care if you do the heaviest eyebrow and you contour your face and you put on tons of lipstick and you do crazy colors and glitter. That is fabulous. My issue is the skin. Mm -hmm. I definitely have a skin fetish. I think skin is, <laughs> is very sensual. Skin is sexual. And I don't understand why if you look at your skin on your body, it's beautiful. And then it comes to your face mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you've got this mask on that looks completely fake. Mm -hmm. You know, the attention that people get visually from you is not going to be the kind of attention you really want. You think you're getting attention mm -hmm. because of your great makeup skills, but actually you're, you're also getting attention for, whoa, there's so much foundation on her skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, people have bad skin, but another problem is, is, is everybody is putting on too much makeup just to cover a few spots. The idea is to put on less makeup and go in there and actually be an artist and touch up each little spot and correct each little spot and you'll, your skin will look 10 times better. Mm -hmm. you, ever since like we've started an interview, I noticed that he keeps saying that I don't care about what other people think. And it's, it's a huge feat for someone like me. I'm a whole different generation. Mm -hmm. We were a generation that went out there and did whatever we wanted, yes. and we didn't care. Yes. You have to remember, I'm a baby boomer. Mm -hmm. You guys are millennials. You guys have pressure from every time you pick up an Instagram post. Yeah. You're a mess. <laughs> I don't want to be mean. I really don't 
don't want to be mean. So but like I get, I'm a mess looking at Instagram mm -hmm. yeah. when I look at you know comments on my website. I'm like, oh my god, no wonder it's it's really we're kind of in a state of bullying. Yes, and. Um, a lot of people are going to be more sensitive to it than other people, mm -hmm. but it's even hard on me, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty strong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Our society where we are placed as millennials, we're, we're expected to always look like this. But are you expected to always look like that, or do you think you're expected to look like that? That's the question. But you know what? It's so funny because when I was young, I was like that too. I always thought I had to be prettier, better, bigger, whatever, you know? Yeah. And when I look back on my pictures when I was young, you know what I say to myself? That I was a stupid effing idiot. <laughs> and I look how beautiful I was and how beautiful my skin was. Yeah, I had a few pimples. And you, you have so many regrets when you're older to think, wow, I didn't take advantage of things in my life. I was pretty. I was thin. I was exactly what I should have been at that age. And, you, and we're beating ourselves up every single day trying to be younger every day. Yeah. When actually that's never going to happen. You're never going to be younger every day. Yeah. doesn't matter what product you buy. You're never going to be younger the next day. Mm -hmm. You're always a day um, older. Mm -hmm. And so if people could just embrace that and realize, mm -hmm. wow, you know, I will be old one day. Mm -hmm. You, you want to look good now, but don't go crazy and do all these crazy things that you're going to regret. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no such thing as aging gracefully with the face. It's mm -hmm. your soul that ages gracefully. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you either have it inside you or you're just accepting. Like, I looked at myself this morning, and I'm like, oh, my God. I'm getting old. And I just thought, and then, you know, when I put down my makeup brush, I said, I don't care. I'm having fun, man. I'm going to Amon, Amon Pulo, is yeah. it tomorrow? I thought, what the hell? I don't care. <laughs> You know, but, but you know, I can say that because I'm older and I have some money now, which mm -hmm. obviously is a nicer thing than when you're young and you don't have any mm -hmm. money, but, but you just, you know, aging gracefully is also strength of the soul. Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing worse than a girl that can't accept the fact that she's going, getting older and she's whining <laughs> every day to you. <laughs> she's saying, oh my God, I don't look good. And she's spending 10 million hours on her makeup ain't my friend anymore. I don't mm -hmm. have the time for that nonsense. Mm -hmm. Like, get your act together. Mm -hmm. You're getting older, so what? We all get older. That's the, na that's the nature of the, of the world and the nature of Mother Nature, the nature of just life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to be all hung up and be talking about it and being all stressed out about it, exactly. you're aging yourself talking about anti aging <laughs> You know? Sounds so... <laughs> Oh my God, it's like crazy. Some people are crazy. I have friends that whine about everything. I don't hang around with them anymore. That's They're depressing. Yes. It may yeah. affect you, how you think, yes. how you feel. you got to be around people that, that are uplifting you, people that are doing, having some sex, success in their life and mm -hmm. some motivation. To hang around people like that, you're just going to get in a big uh, like pity party with everybody. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> not pressured by what other people say, like all of the pressure is on us. Well, if you keep yourself occupied with something you want to do creatively or financially, whatever your, your area of expertise is, mm -hmm. that's what keeps you not going into that weird negative mindset. Mm -hmm. You've got to be doing something. Mm -hmm. And something as simple as eating healthy and doing exercise is going to get you out of that kind of depressive mind state anyway. Mm -hmm. And eat properly. I always want to ask um, founders, how do you get over the uncertainty that your, your company's not going to do well? Oh, you never get over that. You mm -hmm. never get over that because there's always somebody bigger and better. And there's always someone you're going to compare yourself to. You have to remember, I'm coming from, from working with people that are gazillionaires mm -hmm. and these models are drop dead gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So I'm always like, okay, well, I don't look like that anymore. Okay, I don't have money for private jet. And you just have to keep going doing what you do. And the universe is going gonna, is gonna to reward you if you put the time and energy and, and the heart and the honesty and the integrity into a product or whatever it is you're, you're destined to do or you feel you want to do, you have it made. <laughs> you know? People do too much comparing as, oh, I don't have that. You're never going to have, you know, I'm never going to look like Giselle. You know, I'm never going to have the money of, I don't know who's a big billionaire, but, uh, you know, some of these billionaires mm -hmm. out there, I'm never going to have that, even with my brand. Mm -hmm. Some people are lucky in life, some people inherit it in life, you know, but it doesn't make them any happier also. Okay. That hit home. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I know a lot of people that are beautiful and rich and they're and miserable and I don't hang around with them. <laughs>
people who make me feel bad. Yeah, get rid of them. Exactly. They don't make your life no. any better. <laughs> no, no. You have to have you have to have people around you that that, that that stimulate you. How do you keep yourself happy? I'm not always happy, honey. I'm not always happy. Sometimes we have you know depressing things happening with the brand, or someone wants to leave and move to New York, and we got oh my god, we got to get a new play person here, and you know, and then I go oh my god, my little dog got killed, so I wasn't happy for a year. <laughs> I've been whining and crying the whole year about my dog. I kept it to myself, but it was awful. So you know, there's always ups and downs. Sometimes I'm really happy. I am happy when I'm traveling though, and I am happy when I'm doing things like this make me happy because I feel like I you know the things I have to say. I can express myself to younger people and, and I just hope that they do listen yes. and don't go, oh, stupid baby boomer, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, sometimes I'm unhappy, you know, but like I said, when you're motivated to do something that's coming from your heart, your heart and your fulfillment of that makes you happy. Like, I love talking to people. I love getting on an airplane and going to all these new countries. I don't want to sit at home in my house. So, well, some people love sitting at home in their house, but you know, get out there, meet people. Mm -hmm. And every time I meet somebody new, it changes my attitude towards things. Every time I, I see how somebody does their makeup in, let's say, in Japan, compared to how you know they do it in America, I've learned from the Japanese too how to mm -hmm. do a different approach to my luminizer. Mm -hmm. So it, all that makes me happy because I'm not closing off. I'm letting new education also change my mindset. Because, you know, I am an older generation. We're very set in our ways and this is how yes. you should do it. But if you don't get out and about, meet people, and be stimulated by people, and listen to what they have to say, you're going to be some miserable old woman or guy. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying that even up to now, with 30 plus years in the industry, you're still learning every day. Oh my God, I learn every day. I learned something the other day at, at, at Adora. You know, the the uh, the um, uh, all the the, the uh, makeup artists. They all came yesterday mm -hmm. for some things, and you know, I was watching some of them do makeup. I'm like, hmm, interesting. I like that. You know. Yeah. So yeah, I actually I'm always learning. You never know everything. There's no such thing as knowing everything. There's always going to be somebody that knows more than you, or a makeup artist, even if they're new and young, they can teach you something. Or even when I meet, like I said. The makeup artist here. I saw them doing some things that were different. I thought I liked that. I comm I commended them on saying, "Hey, I'm going to steal that idea." <laughs> you know, they all just laugh because people like to be recognized yes. for for their individuality and their um, you know, and their their creativity. Mm -hmm. So, one one of the things that I'd like to say is mm -hmm. is you know, the grass is always greener on the other side. And everybody else is just as depressed. Everybody else thinks that they're fabulous. We're all exactly the same. Some people show up more than other people. Some people can handle it and you know get help and talk to people. Mm -hmm. Some people hold it all in. And um, we're all exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Some of us are just going to achieve more in life than other people. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You know, just go out and do what it is you want to do. Enjoy every day as it. it as it comes, you know, day after day, just have fun. <laughs> and the thing is, the young people too, they need to take the pressure off of having to do something. I didn't do my brand jobs in my 50s. You know, kids nowadays when they're 19, they're like, oh my God, what am I going to do in my career? And I'm like, really? You need to just go out and get laid. <laughs> if I can say that, sorry, but, you know, just enjoy life and, and don't worry about, you know, being taken care of. Don't make your own money. Don't worry about how much money you have. If you don't have money now, you'll make money later. You figure out something else to do. Mm -hmm. You know, always have your parents to back you. Yeah. <laughs> so there. Um, so there. Yeah. What is a piece of advice that you'd want to give for, um, to people who are age twenty to twenty-nine? Twenty to twenty-nine. Well, there's something you don't know about me. I'm also a professional astrologer. Really? So I know what happens when you hit twenty-eight, twenty-nine. In astrology, every single person goes through it in their lives. When you hit 28, 29, you turn, that's when you start acting like an adult. You change your life, you figure out what it is you want to do, you question what you might have already done, i.e., getting married, things like that, mm -hmm. because you thought you had to get married. Mm -hmm. So I always tell young people give yourself till you're after 28, 29 years old, and then figure out what you want to do. But until then, you're on an experimental, having fun phase. So don't put pressure on yourself because 
If you put pressure on yourself, <laughs> you're in big trouble because when you hit 28, 29, everything's going to fall apart. You're going to have to reevaluate. That's your growing, that's your real wake up call to growing and being an adult is that time. It's called the Saturn return. Mm -hmm. So don't do anything too fast until after that. Unless you're really on a mission business wise or something successful that you really want to do, then that's okay. But if you're not sure, don't jump into something for the sake that you've got to do something. Take that pressure off of yourself. <laughs> So thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope that helped. That helped a lot. <laughs> I felt like a, a huge weight got off my shoulders. Because I, I heard this. Like, thank you guys. Um, I heard this from someone who's achieved so much in life. And I'm only 22. And I've yeah. You're so a munchkin. <laughs> You're a munchkin. <laughs> exactly. We're so young. Yeah. And I think like we have to achieve things by age 24, 27, yeah. and it, it makes us so miserable. Yeah. And to see someone like you so happy, it, it's amazing. Well, I'm not always happy, but... <laughs> <laughs> so that's fun. I'm so thankful for you. Thank you very much, honey. That was fun, actually. Oh. <laughs> okay. Bye, people. <laughs> Go do what I said. <laughs> or don't do what I said, too. <laughs> okay. So, thank you.